This Cafe Caps. I love this. Thanks for having us. Uh, going on a little journey. Um, so for anyone that doesn't know you, please introduce yourselves and say who you are and who you play in the show. I am Josh Kidderman and I play Jean Valjean. I'm Lucy Jones and I play Fonty. If you haven't seen it yet, what then we're, we're, you're missing been? out. <laughs> anyone that hasn't seen it, what is the show about? Anyone who hasn't seen it, um, please tell me about this rock that you live under. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd love to know what your, what your bedroom looks like. Um, it's about the human spirit. It's about human condition, human suffering. It's about um, revolution. It's about sticking up for what you believe in. It's about retribution and redemption. It's about love. It's about God. It's about lots and lots of banging tunes, one after the other, after the other. Yeah, it is full other. of mega bangers. <laughs> yeah. And we're set in the student revolution in the 1800s in Paris. Uh, so we're in a completely different state to our day-to-day -day life, so it is escapism as well. Yeah, it's, it's so much of it is show. relevant to what's going on so now. So I mean, politically relevant, it's yeah. insane. Totally. It's insane. I mean, the discrepancy in you know, wealth and class structure that we're dealing with at the moment is so similar to what's going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yeah, there's, there's a lot to connect to. Yeah. Okay, very, very good. And um, so, so obviously, you, that was very deep. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I know. You, you, sold you it. had so many words for it as well. So <laughs> I'm going to have to write those down. I was literally like, what else is going to come out of your face? That's so cool. Well done. But you sold it. You, you That's sold it, it comes out. It just comes out of my face. Yeah. It's the passion. It's the passion. <laughs> And so you both started doing the show together now, but Lucy, you've done the show before. I have, right? yes. And Josh, is it your first time doing it? First time. So how did like the audition process for you, how did you how did it sort of come about for you going into this show and for you coming back into it? How did that happen? Well, I first joined the show uh, in 2010 as Cosette. <laughs> Uh, when I was 17, 18, and I did it for a year then, and then I went away for years and years and years, and then I came back just after the pandemic to do the socially distanced concert version of Les Mis as Fontaine, which I auditioned for, and I did a, a short audition process because it was in lockdown and we were all socially distanced, and um, that was quite an interesting uh, audition, actually, coming into town when everything was shut down and going into a theatre mm. and everything so they was... they did see you in person? Yeah, so. they did, they did. Um, but it, I, I don't know how many people they saw and how long we had in the room and everything. But uh, yeah, it was quite different. That was one of my first lockdown in-person auditions. And then this time it was just a case of coming back because I did it in the concert and didn't quite get to do it in the full show. So I was lucky enough to be asked to come back. And I said, yes, absolutely. Please, thank you. <laughs> Please. Um, mine was a little different. I. Um... I, I was in Australia, uh, after doing Phantom here and lockdowns happening, I went back to Australia um, for many things, uh, but one of which was doing the Phantom the Opera in, in Oz at the Opera House in Sydney down, and down in Melbourne. And prior to the Opera House opening, um, uh, Sir Cameron was, uh, was in town for the opening of Mary Poppins. We caught up, had a coffee, and he said, what would you like to do after Phantom? And I said, I've always wanted to do Les Mis. He said, oh, haven't you done it before? I'm like... You would know. <laughs> like, uh, good point. Um, and the, oh, what part would you like to, to play? And I and uh, I said Jean Valjean. And, and what was really interesting is he that one of the first things he asked me was, "Are you a religious man?" And I I said, uh, I, "I am in the sense that I'm a very spiritual man." And we talked about you know meditation. He seemed to be more interested in in that than you know my vocal capacity or anything like that. So that was a really interesting conversation which led to a subsequent audition here. I was coming over for a holiday prior just prior to starting Phantom um, and did it like a 75 minute sort of workshop. I think they knew that I had to leave again so they got to as much as possible and then just did a subsequent video audition when I was back in Oz and um, yeah, and no, the rest is history. Yeah, now I'm here again. So obviously now, because you've done Phantom and now Les Mis, have you got a preference to what show you prefer? Or I mean, they they are both very different. I'm I'm gonna play Switzerland and just okay. um and just <laughs> sit on the fence there. Yeah. Um, just because smart they both boy, smart boy. They just both offer us so much. I had such a great time doing Phantom, two different productions, two different countries. Um, it, it's a very special show. Uh, to me, but but for me, Les Mis was the show that got me into musical theatre. So, and Jean Valjean is the most astonishing role to play. So, um, they it's both. It's not time yet, is it? Ask him again in like six months' <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Then he might be able to give like a one-word answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well said. I Lou think Joe. so. I think so. Right, well said. <laughs> so with the show, um, and it maybe not be together. Well, it would be together or different when you were on your own. Has there been any like on stage mishaps where something's happened and gone terribly wrong that you would know? but not the audience necessarily, or...? I think things happen all the time that the audience would never know about, whether they be little or large, because we're live, yeah, and we do it right. every day. It's bound to happen. I got but... smacked in the face last night with a gun. Oh, you did? Are you all right, by the way? Yeah, yeah, Did you see me looking over at you like, are you OK? I was trying to, like, telepathically be like, are you all yeah. right? And, and I went back... <laughs> I know. <laughs> and what did you say to that in your head? And I said, yeah. yeah that means yes. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Yeah, so like things like that happen all, all the time. So I was singing Bring Him Home and going... Am I bleeding? Am I, yeah, am I bleeding? Am no, I bleeding? This is very sore. This is like, yeah, bring him home, but also take Ouch. me to an ice pack. Oh, <laughs> no. The thing is, things, they, little things happen all the time, but it's kind of part of our job, a big part of our job, to make sure the audience don't know. But a, a fun part of our job also, because like very rarely does it actually include somebody getting hurt or, you know, something going, like, drastically wrong but little things going wrong all the time they, they just they happen all the time and it's fun to be oh you know kept on your toes and Keeps make the sure precious, yeah definitely the same thing day in day absolutely out, and, and make sure the audience experience the same thing that the audience tomorrow will in a nutshell you know there's good let's face it we're all feelings, we're all a, a silly bunch of sausages so <laughs> we like we, we want to engage in you know, like we do. We like know, to play. We yeah, like yeah. to play. You know, yeah. we're all just kids. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's you know a, an important part of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is your favourite song from the show? Dream to Dream. That's done. Yeah, great. It's Josh's too, <laughs> especially when I'm singing it. That's what he said. That's exactly that's exactly, <laughs> what, that is exactly what I said. In all interviews, I say that. But deep down, I'm lying because. It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually very much enjoy the confrontation, okay, yeah, which yeah. happens just after I die. <laughs> Sorry, um, but the the music with what happens on stage physically with these guys. Obviously, I'm not watching it in the show because I'm. She's just like. I'm gone. Like, turn like peek <laughs> through my it. eye. But in the concert version, I stood and watched it, and it was just amazing, even without the physicality that went with it. Right. So I love listening to that bit. It's so powerful, and the, the orchestrations and everything are amazing, amazing. as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, very, very cool. I like that bit. If you could play another character in the show, like any gender or anything, what would it be and why? I'd like to play Javert. Would you, okay. I think Javert is one of the most difficult roles to manage, because you have to feel for him, but he's awful. He does yes. some really na nasty things to characters that and we Boy really Stewart love. And does such a oh, he's incredible, incredible. Job. He's amazing. He like, does so amazing. so well, um, and yeah, I think he has wonderful music to sing as well. And yeah. yeah, yeah. I just would love to play Shiver. Yeah. Mm. Um, Gavroche. Would you? Be yeah, like? because it, it was like the role that I could connect with most as a as a kid yeah. when I first. Yeah, yeah. So it was like you know, like little little Josh. Um, you know, just would love to be able to go back and. B10, or um, I know that there's like emergency covers, like you know. Oh yeah, the first time I was at the show, my cover, who was a, a, a Cosette. Yeah, cover. she was a Cosette cover. Um, she was a, a slightly shorter than me, shall we say? Um, I'm sure she wouldn't mind me saying that. She went on and played Gavroche in the same show as playing something else as well. I, think. I feel like so it was good. one of those kind of days, but but yeah, yeah. she was. I think she was like late 30s. When well, we've she got did two that. Gavroches well, in the building, right? And so if they're both you know, ill or poorly in some way, then someone else has to be the emergency cover and it's, um, yeah, it's, one the, one it's someone in the ensemble, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gosh. <laughs> and, and you mentioned, like, little Josh there, like, looking back, you would have wanted to be Gavroche. What would you say to little Josh now, now that you're in Les Mis? Like, what advice would you have given yourself back then about getting into the industry and performing and how your life has turned into? What would you tell him? Breathe and take your time. That's about it. Yep. Yeah. And in, funnily enough, that was what our voice coach Stephen Coston said to us at drama school every time we got up to do anything he was always like breathe and take your time and we always sort of giggled at that but it's exactly what I would tell myself that it will all happen as it's supposed to happen and you know if you work hard enough and dream big enough and uh, persistent um, but equally patient then life will unfold as it should. Yeah. And for little Lucy, what advice Oh, little Lucy, she wouldn't believe it. She would not believe it. Um, 
I think my, my one piece of advice that I give to anyone who ever asks is just to see as much as you can, read as much as you can, be a sponge, learn, mm. understand people and be as empathetic to every situation and person that you possibly ca can that you encounter because at some point you'll probably be able to draw on those experiences and really yeah. feel them and understand them uh, and it just makes the whole experience so much more enjoyable if you're you know, pushing for things and really, you know, fighting for things and not enjoying them in the moment and not understanding them and learning from them, then, God, you'd burn out so fast. It would be so boring. Mm. There'd be no fun to be had. Uh, so, yeah, I'd say just keep watching and listening and having fun. Amazing. Book your tickets now for Les Mis at thetheatrecafe.co.uk. See you soon.